Hi, Scott Sager here today. I'm at the Rochester Middle School where the sixth graders are using their 20% time to do some exciting projects. I've got a young lady with me. What's your name, dear? Elena Carpenter. Excellent. Elena, tell me about your project back here. What did you do and what inspired you? I did the history of animations because my mom loves art and she does 2Ds and there's uh, we have a 3D printer and we okay. print things on there that makes it 3D. Did you say a 3D printer? Yes. Oh, excellent. And I'm like, well, I, I want to, I've learned to do um, 3D printing stuff. And I'm like, well, since I've learned to do that, maybe, maybe I can figure out what used to be the animations. Um, How they used before. to do it? Yeah. And um, so I researched a lot about it, and I found that Phantasmagory is the first animation made into a film. And it started out just as one little picture, right. and then it progressed where it moved, and then it was made into a film. So how they do it? Did they do it basically with clay back then? Um, it was like it with chalk, and oh. then they it, it looked like that, but that's just painted. But it was chalk around it, and then it was black in the middle. Well, fantastic! Do you think you learned a lot during this process? Yes. Yes. Was it a lot of fun? Yeah. Okay. Very good. Well, we'll go on to some other students here. Thank you for your time. Well, here we have a, another young lady. She's done hers electronically. First of all, tell us your name, dear. Taylor Cottle. Taylor? Excellent, Taylor. This says animal lab testing on it. So what was your project about? Um, it was about, like, testing on lab animals and finding, like, diseases in their, like, tissue and their body. So using animals in medicine and research? Yes. Excellent. So was it fun? Yeah. I didn't get to do, like, I didn't get to, like, job shadow, but I, it was fun to work on, and... What inspired you to do, do something about animal lab testing? Well... I see you're wearing a horse shirt, so I'm guessing that you like animals. Yes. I also, I like animals, and also my aunt, um, her, she works at Purdue, yes. and she is the, like, the head of the lab testing oh, no kidding. in so was she your mentor yes excellent. excellent all the kids had some mentors then people in the community people that they know who had quite a few uh, or a bit of knowledge I should say about the subject at hand had a couple of uh, students actually contact RTC I was able to help out with some of the uh, documentary type things and uh, so very interesting for a lot of the kids so I'm glad you had a lot of fun do you get graded on this too I think so. Yeah. Well, I think you get an A, okay? All right, you tell the teacher I said that. Thanks for your time. Well, we've got another nice booth here. What's your name, dear? Emily Barton. Emily, talk to us. I am getting hungry looking at yours. We've got some nice uh, fruits and vegetables on the tray here. So uh, talk to us about what your presentation's on. So my project is about nursing, and I have this graph here about, like, month by month in the womb, of the babies. So like the first one is the size, the baby would be like the size of a poppy seed. And after the second month, the baby grows to be the size of a kidney bean. So this is this is the size of a uh, baby as he's going through gestation? Yeah. Fantastic, my goodness. So we go all the way from this little speck of pepper down here all the way to the size of that watermelon. I don't know if I can handle something the size of that watermelon. So nursing, is that something that uh, you were inspired to do because that's what you want to do? Or do you have family members? Um, my dad is a ER doc. Okay. He's like just going into residency. And I've always been like interested in doing nursing. So I just thought that would be a good thing to do on my project. Excellent. Well, it's a wonderful presentation. We appreciate all the work you put into it. Was it fun? Yeah. See, that's the important part learning and having fun at the same time. So we'll move on to another one, but thank you for your time. Thank you. Well, this project right here caught my eye from across the room. It's called Hoosier Hysteria, High School Boys Basketball in Indiana, presented by this young man. What's your name? Braden Zink. Braden. This is an elaborate basketball homage to what everything Indiana does, steeped in history with basketball, aren't we? Yes. So you got to tell me, my friend, what got you, you know, of all the projects in the world, you chose Indiana basketball. What inspired you? 
Uh, mostly my great grandfather. Great grandfather. Talk to me about your great grandfather. Uh, he played for Culver, um, and he made it to the All Star team in 1946. 1946 All Star team out of Culver. Very good. Very good. What was his name? Uh, Roger Thuis. Okay, very good. So that guy that got you going. Are you a big basketball player yourself? Yes. Yeah. Okay. What grade are you in? Six. Six. All right. Yeah. You dunking yet? A little mm -hmm. behind the back, kind of Dominique Wilkins. No. Okay, not yet. not yet. We'll get you there, though, right? Yeah. Well, talk to us a little bit. You've got a map over here. What's this map about? Uh, it's about my, like, all the famous players. In Hoosier. From Indiana? Yeah. I see Damon Bailey down there in Bedford, North Lawrence, right? Yeah. I was in college with Damon. We were in some classes together. That's cool. He's coaching now somewhere, right? Yeah. Yeah, okay. So who are some of the other players around here? I see Scott Skiles up there from Plymouth. Mm -hmm. uh, Larry Bird. Larry Bird, where's he from? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Very good. Well, uh, then you've got a project here where you've got uh, some stuff on a slideshow. Uh huh. Yeah. It shows like from me when I was at the Hall of Fame. Say the Indiana there. High School Hall of Fame. Yeah. Very good. And that's in Indianapolis, or where is that? Uh, Newcastle. Newcastle. That's right. Thank you. So did you take a trip down there with your family? Is that yeah. what you did? Uh huh. Excellent. Thanks, mom and dad, for getting him down there. He had some fun with that, didn't he? Yeah. Well, we've got some other things. What's some of this over here? I see something that's got. If I can lift this up for the camera a little bit, it says UCLA on it. What's this about? Uh, that was uh, from my, for my great uncle to my great uh, grandfather. Oh, no kidding. From John Wooden. Oh, from John Wooden, and it's signed right here by John Wooden. That's that's valuable. Very nice. We've got some stuff here from Roger. Can we lift this up a little bit for the camera? Okay. Roger Thrues, his great great or his great grandfather. Culver High School, Elite Eight, 1944 and 46. 1946 sectional scoring record of 80 points. Well, that's some wonderful history. So you've had a lot of fun. And the last thing down here, I feel like I'm on the Antiques Roadshow a little bit here. This is his actual uniform from the All-Star Game? Yes. From the 1946 All-Star Game. That's great. Yeah. So you've got all these wonderful things. Now, when you're done with your project here, does all the stuff go back on your wall in your room? Uh, yeah, pretty much. Kind of around the house, too? Well, very good. Well, thank you very much for your time. I'm glad you uh, brought us in today for this uh, project on the high school experience here in Indiana. Thanks. Thank you. Okay. Scott Sager here again. We've got another young lady. She's got a wonderful presentation about the Apple evolution. What's your name, dear? Delaney Strasser. Delaney. So, Delaney. Are you an iPhone person? You love the iPhones? Yeah. Yeah. I'm a Samsung guy myself. Does that make me a bad person? No. I'm just not a member of the Apple Club, am I? So you've got all sorts of phones here. Are these your old phones? These are my friends and family's old phones. They lent them to me to use because I just wanted to show how they've evolved and got bigger and how they used to need to be sleek and shiny. And now they are all get to be colorful. And yeah. Yeah. Now they even have the new Jet Black, which isn't even shiny at all. It's so, just like a hard black color. Like a, like a matte? Yeah. Like a matte black? Very cool. So we've got the iPhone 4 all the way to the iPhone 6S. iPhone 7's for sale now, right? Yeah, even the iPhone 7 Plus, which is huge. It's about... Seven, it's the size, size of, of a house. But, you know, we need those type of tablets in our lives, right? Yeah. The bigger, the better, right? Mm-hmm. So you've got uh, a whole bunch of information you found out about Steve Jobs, among other things, right? Yes. What's your verdict on Steve Jobs? Was he a maniac or was he a genius? I think he was a genius. A genius. Me too. Me too. Well, very good. What do you have over here showing on the screen? This is just a slideshow of basically every Apple product ever created. Oh, no kidding. And I just have it showing so that basically it's the same information on my board, yeah. but I just have it showing so that people can look at it and like the other students as they're waiting, they can read it. A good use of multimedia, right? So uh, a big project, a lot of components to this. Did you have fun? Yeah, this was definitely worth a few months of working. Excellent. Well, good use of that 20% time. The kids are having a great time learning lots. So uh, thank you for your time, dear. Thank you. Okay, now we're with a young man, Destin Green. Is that correct? Yes. Excellent, Destin. Well, uh, you've got a documentary filmmaking uh, project. Talk to us a little bit about what got you into that. Well, what just got into me, it, um, I watch YouTube a lot, and there's this documentary filmmaker, YouTuber that inspired me. His name's Casey Neistat, mm -hmm. and he does like short documentaries that he inspired me, and his most inspired one was the running one, 
and he inspired me a lot by doing that. Excellent, excellent. So you were inspired by the YouTube videos of some documentaries that you've seen some others do. We do documentaries on RTC TV4, as you guys know. We're recruiting Destin now, so we start young. So uh, talk to us a little bit about what's up on your board here and what you're talking about. Well, all you need is for a documentary is you just need an iPhone or anything that you can film with. And also, film school is not recommended, but it's uh, I mean, it is recommended, but you don't have to go. Yeah, anybody can grab a camera. And nowadays, of course, cameras are everywhere. They're on our phones, our tablets, our computers. They're in our glasses. They're everywhere, right? Yes. So what are some of the components that go into documentaries? And, and I think you and I talked about this before. What, uh, what type of documentaries? Because it's a very broad category. There's a whole bunch, like, like a different types of emotions, like romantic, inspiring, and also the sport documentaries and biography. Biography tells about how people or a group lives. Right, right. We've all seen biography on the Biography Channel, in fact. Um, what of those is your favorite, Destin? Um, Sports, history, the biography, the lifestyles. Probably the biography. Yeah. The one by Susan Green, Native American. Yeah, recent, yeah. Uh, Susan Green uh, doing some work around the community. Susan did a uh, video called Like Birds in a Windstorm that talked about the uh, trail of death and everything happened there. Shirley Willard and others were involved in that. Of course, we do the Trail of Courage out there every September at the Historical Society. So a lot of fun things. So, well, I'm encouraged to see folks interested in cameras and what you can do with those. Obviously, I do that every day. So, well, good job. You had a lot of fun doing this? Yes, it's very fun for the two months. Yeah, yeah. Well, very good. Well, thank you for your time today and good luck to you. Thank you. Okay. Well, now we're with a young lady I'm quite familiar with. This is my niece, Elizabeth Weaver. Cannot believe she's in sixth grade. In fact, the latter part of sixth grade. Elizabeth, you did a wonderful project here on a subject I worked on when I was in middle school. What are we talking about here today? The Holocaust. Okay. Not the uh, happiest of subjects, but a very, very important lesson to be learned by all. They study it in all the classes. Talk to us about what got you inspired to do your project on the Holocaust. I've just always been interested in it and I just figured, oh, I want to, what, what better time to learn about it than now? And because I knew we were going to learn about it later in the year. Yeah, absolutely. What are some of the, the biggest points that you drew from that or some of the information that you did learn? I don't know. I learned a lot of stuff. A lot. So we've got some photos here. We've got Mussolini and Hermann Goering. We've got Benito Mussolini, of course, the Italian fascist. And then, of course, we've got the camps, uh, Auschwitz, some of the others. Hope. Do you have hope after going through something like a study of the yes, Holocaust? I think, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You come back from even the worst atrocities and humanity comes back together and we trudge on, but something we never want to see again, correct? Yes. yes. Hopefully we never will. Hopefully the lesson was learned the first time here. Well, a great job on a beautiful project. A lot of research went into this, and we thank you for spending some time with us. Thank you. Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye. Well, we're here with another young lady. I saw a screen up behind her, and so we wanted to uh, pop over here. What's your name, dear? Bella Riffle. Excellent. And what is your project about? Animation. Animation. Talk to us about it. Okay. Or are you going to show us about it? Okay, she's going to show us. Let's take a look. How do I start animating? Start by animating a ball bouncing. After finishing your ball animation, you can take lessons on basic animation. Okay. What programs can I use to animate? There are many programs in which you can animate on. To the right of the screen are some of the best animating programs you'll find. Autodesk Maya, Blender, Adobe Flash, Autodesk, Soft Image, and Cinema 4. What types of animations are there? There are many different types of animations. Um, there is 3D animation, most common type of animation used in movies, 2D animation, animation used in older movies, and paper animation, mostly used in paper-like cartoons. Okay, so let's talk for a moment. Don't need so much of that. What are some of the things that inspired you to get into the animation as your presentation? Um, well, I got into animation because my friend, he's over there he has chemical reactions he did this animation thing once and looked really cool so I decided I wanted to try it out and then I realized how much I liked it and how much I wanted other people to be inspired to do it so that's why I did it as a presentation 
Excellent. Did you have fun? Yeah. Did you learn? Yes, a lot. Do you want to be an animator when you grow up? Yes. All right, very good. Come in to square yourself in camera again. Tell us your name. Bella Riffle. Okay, right here on RTC4 now. 10, 15 years from now, you know you're going to see her. Her name's going to be at the credit at the bottom of the Disney movies, right? Frozen 2. You're going to start on that? Possibly. Possibly. I like that. Well, thank you for your time today, dear. Thank you. All right. Okay, well, now we've got another young lady here. She's got a very bright, colorful display. I like that. It draws the eye. What's your name, dear? Alexa Kuskusakis. And what are we talking about here today? Uh, the volleyball history. <laughs> volleyball. The history of volleyball. Yeah. That was actually probably pretty interesting, wasn't it? Yeah. I'm okay, well, give us, give me a quick, quick summary. When did volleyball start? Um, in the late 1900s, somewhere around there. Okay, so about around 1900, yeah. the early 1900s. Excellent. Um, it's an Olympic sport now, right? Yeah. And how long has it been in the Olympics? Do you know? Um, not sure about that. A long time. Just make yeah. up a number. They won't know the difference. <laughs> That's great. So, are you a volleyball player here at yeah. RMS? Great. And sixth grade? Yeah. So, you're pretty tall already for a sixth grade. You're going to be tall. I like that. So, we'll be looking for you up there in the high school ranks here in a few years, okay? Yeah. All right. Well, thank you for your time. Did thank you learn you. some stuff? Yeah, I learned a lot. And you had fun? Yeah. Well, that's what it's all about. What we're hearing, uh, all these kids are having a great time with this 20% time. Teachers did a great job inspiring them with projects. You're seeing multimedia in these projects. So uh, thank you for your time, okay? Thank you. All right. Okay, well, we've got another young lady here, and uh, where the colors drew me on the last one, this one, it was the spots that drew me in. This is a presentation about the Dalmatian. So uh, who do we have here today? Kylie Coleman. Excellent. And it's the Dalmatian, right? You did the history of the Dalmatian? Yep. What inspired that? When I was little, I went to a place in Chicago and I got a Dalmatian stuffed animal and I liked it. Dalmatian stuffed animal years ago drew her attention. So you found out a lot about the history of Dalmatians, right? Yes. Okay. When did they start? Have they been around since the time of Egypt or? Yeah, they actually have. They were one of the first dogs to be founded. Okay, so they were genetically bred, right? Yes. And they were one of the first? Mm -hmm. No kidding. Now, do you have a Dalmatian? No. No. So, of all the projects and all the things you could have done, you chose Dalmatians because you love Dalmatians. Talk to me about Dalmatian spots. Do they all have the same number of spots? No, it depends on how they're born. Because when they're about a week, they don't always have black spots. They could have any color of spots. They could be red, blue, yellow, any color. And then once they are older, they turn black or gray. So the spots come in as they get older. I didn't know that. I've never had a Dalmatian. I think they're cute though. Now I see the fire truck thing. Do you know about the history? How they get involved with the fire trucks? Yeah, they are fire truck dogs because they have been compatible with horses because they're faster than horses and they or they're always in front of the horses to warn people about the yeah, fire truck. they kind of led the way right the dalmatian led the the carriage with the the fire equipment on it yep. well very good well i'm glad you had a good time anything else you want to tell us about dalmatians not really we pretty much covered it well thank you again okay well we have a very progressive young lady here sixth grade remember this and her project is how to start your very own business so let's start with an introduction what's your name dear Ava Stowell. Ava. Ava wants to start her own business, I take it, right? Someday? Yeah. Excellent. So you've got a good head start here on what to do. Talk to us about, uh, first of all, what inspired you to do this as your, as your project? Well, my grandmother is my mentor because she has her own cleaning business. Great. So I work with her on Fridays. So I felt kind of comfortable with yeah. that. And since I want to start my own business, I thought it'd be cool to, you know, learn along the way. That is fantastic. Well, I see number one here on the list is write a business plan. Not always the easiest thing to do, but you got to have your ideas down on paper first, right? Yeah. Excellent. you got to know where you're going. So you feel like you learned a lot through this? Yeah, I feel like I did. I don't know why I put easy because these sound like really hard. Oh, no, no. It's, you know, you have to go through the process, right? Just like yeah. anything. Well, very good. Well, I want to thank you for your time, and I want to wish you well uh, when you get your business up and going, okay? Thank you very much. Right, thank you, dear. Okay, well, one of my favorite subjects here, baking. Yes. What's your name, dear? Emily Ball. 
Emily, um, Emily's telling us how to bake, and I could use an instruction or two, but uh, talk to me. Why baking of all the projects? I love baking. I love baking. I love the eating things that people bake, so that's a good thing. Well, uh, I see some pictures here. Is this you actually baking? Yeah, just from a few days ago. Okay, and what'd you bake? Uh, mini chocolate mayonnaise cupcakes. Mini chocolate mayonnaise cupcakes. Are they good? Yeah. Yeah, I bet they are. I better not try one today, but uh, talk to us about how much fun you had doing this. Who was your mentor? What'd you learn? My Nana and my mom mainly were my mentors, but because my mom used to work in a bakery in town. Nobody bakes better than mom. I'm just telling you now, nobody bakes better than mom. Me. Oh, except for her. Because <laughs> I've baked many things my mom cannot. She tries to make peanut butter. So the student became the teacher, right? Excellent. Well, that's great. Well, again, uh, is that something you want to go into later in career? Yeah, I want to own a bakery called Perfect Pastries. She's already named it. Well, if you marry up with a young lady over here on your business plan, you guys will be all set. She'll make the business plan for you. You'll make the, the cupcakes and brownies, and you guys will just make a million dollars. Is that the plan? Yeah. Hey, I wish you the best of luck. Anything we can do at RTC to help you along the way, you bring those cupcakes in, and we'll try them out for you, okay? Okay. All right, thank you, dear. Thank you. All right, well, we've got another young lady here who has uh, put together a nursing career type of presentation. What's your name, dear? Jalen Utter. Jalen Utter. You want to be a nurse? Yeah. What kind of nurse do you want to be? Um, a nurse practitioner or a neonatal nurse. Nice neonatal. That's some tough stuff right there. A lot of schooling. I'm sure you're up to the task, right? So why nursing? What just is something that's interested you your whole life? What's going on? Yeah, I wanted to be a veterinarian when I was like from 8 to 10, and I grew out of that. And I just researched nursing one day, and I'm stuck to it. Yeah, very good. Well, we'll change our minds a million times. I'm, I'm still not sure what I'm going to do when I grow up, but I'll figure it out someday. So who was your mentor for this? Um, I didn't really have a mentor. I was Google? Yeah. Yeah, Google's a good mentor nowadays. Well, very good. So uh, even after all of your research, you feel like that's still something you want to go into? Excellent. Well, I see you've got some different types of nursing here. You've got registered nurse, pediatric, physical therapist, you've got neonatal, and then the nurse practitioner. So uh, you got some years to figure that out. I wish you the best of luck, okay? Thanks for talking with us. Uh -huh. Okay, well, we're here with another young lady. Very colorful presentation here today, and it says at the top, the flute. So we have a flautist among us. What's your name, dear? My name is Emily Mann. And you do play the flute, I assume. Very good. A week before school started. No kidding. So you've just learned it. Ensemble solos competition this January, and I won gold. So, inspired by a gold medal, keeps her going. Very good. Well, talk to us a little bit about it. What uh, What did your presentation? What did you really focus on? I just focused on the flute in general, different things like history, why, like how to play it. Who made the first flute? Uh, Theodore Bo Bowman. Bo Theodore Bohm, probably B O E. HM, yeah, boom, maybe. And how long ago? Uh, 4,000 years ago. 4,000 years ago, this guy's sitting around, he's got a piece of metal. Did he make it out of metal? Probably would, probably would back then. Just carved it and started blowing some tunes, right? Yep. Um, it's actually the oldest instrument found so far, no currently, at the moment. I'm pretty sure last time I checked online, I don't know if they found any new discoveries. Right. Maybe, maybe the last week they found a drum that's 8,000 years old, but probably not. Yeah. We'll say it's the flute. We'll just hope. <laughs> Very good. So a lot of fun. I mean, you guys, uh, all the kids that we've talked to today, all the students, are talking about the, the fun that they had during this exercise and this project. And this is something that interested you. Um, you're in band? I really am. Okay. Like, uh, out of the four flute players, I am one of them. Excellent. My life. Excellent. Well, I'm glad you've taken to it so well. We look forward to seeing you in uh, middle school performances and high school performances later, okay? Thank you for your time. Thank you. Oh, we got the red light. Must mean we're on. Well, today we're having fun with diabetes. No, wait, that's not the name of your presentation, is it? It's just diabetes. Okay. Well, what's your name, dear? My name is Emma Simpson. Emma. Diabetes was the subject you chose. May I ask why you chose diabetes? Because my sister has it. She has type 1. Type 1 diabetes. So you've been around it your whole life seeing that and what she's had to go through. Yes, I have. Okay, so talk to us a little bit about the research you've done and some of the things happening. Like, type 1 diabetes is like when you're born with it and your pancreas is like dead inside and 
insulin can't go through. And type 2 diabetes is like when you aren't healthy and you eat too much sugary stuff and you don't exercise enough, you can get that. And you can't really get rid of type 2, but at the same time, if you deal with it enough, you can get rid of it. So if you eat better and exercise, it'll help? Yes. And like one third of people have di that have diabetes, that are diabetic, don't know they have diabetes. Really? So undiagnosed, a whole third of them, 30%. Wow. That's a big number. Yes, it is. And then um, when you have type 1 diabetes, you can't just like um, count on insulin to keep you alive and healthy. You have to exercise and stuff. Yeah, you've got to actually treat your body right. Okay. So anything uh, that, that surprised you or that you learned that, that about technologies coming out and how they're helping with diabetes? Well, they're trying to get a cure for type 1 diabetes. Help that pancreas work, right? Yeah. Like, you can get a new pancreas and stuff to help that, but they're also trying to make a cure for it. Yeah, absolutely. Well, you've learned a lot. That's obvious, and you've got a wonderful presentation. I thank you for your time today, and I wish you the best of luck. Well, we've got another colorful, sports-oriented uh, presentation by this young lady who's wearing the Notre Dame colors. What's your name? Callie Watson. So, the official title of this presentation is The Rivalry of Notre Dame versus UConn. Now, I'm just guessing, being a novice at this, but you're probably talking about girls basketball. Yeah. yeah. UConn, the big high on the mountain team, right? Yeah. How many years have they won in a row? Uh, they have won 35 games and Notre Dame has won 11. 35 versus 11 in the times that they've played against each other, right? Unbelievable. And UConn's been national champion year after year after year. So what started this rivalry? Um, the coaches knew that each team, that both the teams are really good and they just don't like to lose and they want to beat each other every time they play. Okay. So one of those bitter things, you know, Tippecanoe Valley and Rochester, a good rivalry. Indiana University, Purdue, another great rivalry. But one of those in the country that you might not have known about is definitely Notre Dame versus UConn in women's basketball. So why Notre Dame and why, why this subject? Um, I like really like Notre Dame, and every time I go to the games, it gets really intense, and I just wanted to learn why it gets that. Excellent. So you go to a lot of the games? Yeah. Excellent. So uh, you want to play for Notre Dame when you're older? Yeah. yeah. Right here, you saw it again, a first on RTC TV for former or future champion right here. Thank you for your time today, dear. Scott Sager, RTC TV4. We've got another great rivalry match up here. This is the IU-Purdue rivalry. I'm here with a young lady. What's your name? Delaney Barkman. Delaney Barkman. I'm going to guess that you like um, maybe the Hoosiers. Yep. Yes. That's a must in your family that you like the Hoosiers, isn't it? Yep. Yes. So, IU-Purdue rivalry. What did you learn about this great subject? Um, I learned how it became... Tell us, tell our viewers right here, right now. Um, it became like a big fight because there was a fight in um, the 1800s when it was a tied game. Uh -huh. And then um, IU like had the ball and then Purdue stole it. And then IU fans wanted a foul and then they did get the foul. And then um, Purdue the next morning and then IU won. And then Purdue the next morning came to IU and they started a fight. Wow, in the 1800s even, right? Okay. So uh, the rivalry is deeply rooted, one would say. So do you know overall between all the matchups, which ones won the more games, the most games? Um, Purdue, they... Okay, we're going to cut that part now. <laughs> they have won 113 against each other, and then IU has only won 88. All right, Purdue fans, I'll give you this one. 113 in the history versus the 88 of IU. Good luck in the tournament. We wish you well. Hey, Delaney Barkman, you did a great job on this. A lot of fun. Was it a lot of fun? Yeah. yeah. Hey, right there into the camera, thank your teacher for letting you have some fun while you learn. Thank you. <laughs> hey, Scott Seger here with RTC. We've had a lot of fun today. Thank you, Delaney, and thank you to all the kids who presented.